How to Obtain an Unsecured Credit Card Most credit cards are unsecured cards, i.e. something that allows you to buy on credit and pay later. This is as opposed to secured cards, which require a deposit. Unsecured cards can be useful in emergencies or hard times, like if you lose your job. Holding at least one unsecured card is also an important way to build credit history and improve your credit score. And, they can also save you money if you take advantage of rewards programs. To make sure you get the best card possible, you'll need to know your credit score and take steps to improve it, decide how you will use your card, and shop around to find the best terms. Part 1 Choosing a Card 1. Think about how you will use your card. Whether you go for low APR, annual percentage rate, or big rewards depends on how you will use the card. If you plan to pay your bill in full every month, then the APR doesn't matter. Look for a card with no annual fee and a long grace period, the time you have to pay after receiving your bill before interest accrues. Be realistic, 60% of Americans carry a balance. If you plan to carry a balance, you will want the lowest possible APR. If you are going to use the card for most of your daily purchases, then you'll want a card with a high credit limit and good rewards. If your card is only for emergencies, then you'll want a card with low fees and a low APR, in case you do use it. 2. Learn your FICO credit score. You can get your credit score for free if you hold a card through Barclays Bank, First National Bank, or Discover. If not, you should contact your lenders to see if they will provide your score. If they won't, you will need to use a site like myfico.com. Myfico.com will estimate your credit score for free, but for the exact score, you will have to join the service, starting at $19.95 a month. 3. Shop around. Once you know your FICO score and how you will use your card, search for cards that you are likely to receive and which match your needs. There are many websites that will allow you to compare credit cards in your credit score range, such as creditkarma.com, bankrate.com, credit.com, creditcards.com, cardratings.com, indexcreditcards.com, and nitiwallet.com. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau also has a sortable database of credit card plans. 4. Don't be afraid of fees. Many people avoid cards that require annual fees. But these cards are often great deals. If you carry a balance, a low percentage rate can easily cancel out a $60 fee. Or if you have a rewards card that offers 2% cash back, you only need to spend $250 a month to make back your $60 fee. 5. Don't let variable interest rates scare you off. A variable rate is tied to an index, usually the prime rate, and changes with it. While the lack of certainty may seem troubling, keep in mind that the Federal Reserve has kept interest rates extremely low for several years now. If a low variable rate is being offered, it is worth considering. 6. Study the fine print when it comes to APR. A difference of even a few percentage points can cost you hundreds of dollars, so you need to be very careful when selecting a card for APR know that. Cards often advertise a low rate, but list a range of rates in the fine print. Don't assume you will get the lowest rate. A low APR for balance transfers can be deceiving, a one-time fee of 3% to transfer your balance is common. Also, be realistic about whether you can pay your balance off in the introductory period, which is usually six months. If not, the APR after that date usually rises dramatically. Look for a penalty APR. The offer will list what the penalty rate is, what triggers it, and how long it will last. A fixed rate cannot be raised for 12 months, but after that, your credit card company can raise it as long as they give you written notice. In some cases, the purchases you make can lead to a raise, such as buying something in a bad part of town or hiring a marriage counselor. Keep your eye out for these notices, as they may mean a significant spike in your interest. 7. Choose between cash, miles, or points if selecting a rewards card. Miles usually give you the best return for dollar spent, but if you value flexibility, cash back or points may be better for you. Cash back, you should try to get at least 2% back. This is the average amount of the fee merchants pay to the credit card company for each transaction. In some categories, like travel, you may be able to get up to 4% cash back. 
Miles, if you book your travel far in advance to maximize your miles and take advantage of introductory offers, i.e. 30,000 miles if you spend a $1,000 in the first three months, the savings on miles cards beat any cashback rate. Miles with a single airline tend to offer the most flexible travel as regards upgrades and international flights. Miles that work for multiple airlines will give you more flexibility when booking domestic flights. Points, these cards allow you to accrue points which you can redeem for travel or gifts. If the points can be transformed into miles at a 1, 2, 1 rate, then these cards basically act as miles cards. However, if you use them to redeem gifts, you will almost always get a much worse value than if you used a cashback card. 8. Make sure you know when the company revokes or reduces rewards. Your rewards aren't forever. Some companies will revoke them if you make a late payment. If you're applying for a card for the rewards, the condition for reducing or revoking rewards is something you should be sure to know. 9. Search for complaints before applying for a card. You don't want a card that has terrible customer service or whose fraud protection software deactivates your card every other month. A quick search with the card's name and complaints or customer service can save you a lot of headaches. 10. Gather the necessary information. You will need to provide basic personal information, as well as financial information, to apply for a credit card. The amount of information varies depending on the type of card you are applying for, but you'll be covered if you prepare the following. Birth date. Social security number. Mailing address. Phone numbers. You will also need the above information for your spouse, if married. Annual household income, before taxes whether you rent or own your home, and for how long you have done so. Monthly rent or mortgage payment. Monthly fixed expenses, i.e. utilities and car payments but not food and gas. Place of employment. Phone number of employer. Amount in your bank or investment accounts. 11. Call the company to apply on the phone. Particularly if the offer lists a range of rates, it pays to apply over the phone. Keep asking until you are given your APR and credit line, at which point you can say yes or no. If they won't give it to you, don't apply for the card. Also, be sure to ask about the conditions for revoking rewards if it is a rewards card. Part 2 Improving your credit score to get a better card 1. Improve your credit score You can get your credit score at 2. Carry some debt Credit companies want to see that you can handle debt, so having no outstanding loans or credit cards actually hurts you. Get at least one credit card and use it occasionally to maintain a good rating. Having a car loan, student loans, or mortgage and making timely payments will also boost your score over time. Paying off a loan, on the other hand, will not impact your score. 3. Don't cancel old credit cards. 15% of your score comes length of credit history while 30% comes from the ratio of your current debt to your current credit. Canceling an old card with a low balance can thus hurt your credit in two ways. 4. But don't hold too many credit cards. Having lots of credit cards lowers your score because it gives you the potential to quickly accrue lots of debt. How many is too many? No one is quite sure, the credit scoring companies keep their precise algorithms private but a good rule of thumb is to only open cards when you really need them. That should limit you to three or four credit cards at most. Steer clear of opening store cards just for discounts and cancel the ones you have once they are paid off. These cards are usually a bad deal. Unless you are very financially disciplined and pay your full balance each month, the high interest rate on your card will likely more than offset any savings you hope to receive. 5. Stay current on your payments. The largest portion of your credit score, 35%, is determined by how punctual you are in making payments, whether on credit cards or loans. Only payments over 30 days late affect your score, so be sure to make all payments before then. 6. Keep your credit card balances low. High balances hurt your ratio of debt to credit, utilization rate, which remember is a large component of your score and be aware that your debt-to-credit ratio is based on your last balance, so even if you charge say $900 towards a $1,000 limit and pay the card off monthly, you will still have a 90% utilization rate. Try to not use more than 25-30% of your credit limit in a month on any given card.
maxing out a credit card will drop your overall credit rating from 10 to 45 points. Paying down a maxed out credit card can instantly improve your score. For the highest credit rating, your debt to credit ratio on credit cards should be below 9%. A ratio of 10% to 20% is probably enough to achieve a good score. 7. Acquire a new card or increase your credit limit. Both will increase your total amount of credit, thereby improving your debt-to-credit ratio. However, do not acquire multiple cards at once as this suggests to credit companies that you are struggling financially. 8. Check your credit report regularly. If something incorrect shows up on your credit report, you need to deal with it as quickly as possible. If someone is using your social security number to open accounts, for instance, this can quickly devastate your credit. Check your credit report annually.